Hey, I'm Max, and in the past few days, I've seen a lot of videos about this new AI called ChatGPT by OpenAI. It is capable of advanced conversation with the users, and it can also create and explain code from what you ask it. Today, I'll try making a Flappy Bird styled game using only code generated by the AI. Keep in mind that you could also combine this with an image generating AI to have the images also made by the AI, so the complete game made by AI. But in this case, I'll use my images. The first script we need to make a Flappy Bird style game is obviously one to make the bird jump. That's like the main mechanic of the game. So I asked the AI, show me how to make a Unity script that makes an object jump when you click. And it immediately started writing how to do it. It even told me how to create the object and add the script to it. I did just like it told me, I created a new script, pasted the code, put it on my object and it wasn't working. And that's because the script gets the rigid body component, but my object has none. I guess the AI forgot to tell me to add the rigid body component. So let me ask it how do I add the rigid body component and see how it replies. Okay, so that's amazing. It's actually telling me how to do it. Also, notice how it remembers the context. I didn't have to mention Unity again, just saying rigid body and it knew what I was talking about. Now it's telling me to add the rigid body component, which is correct for 3D games, but I'm making a 2D game. So what about if my object is in 2D? Here I'm using weird English on purpose to test it with the what about if. And just as expected, the AI still understood perfectly and told me how to do it. It even told me to change the rigid body to rigid body 2D in my code. So that's a nice little touch. Now my bird is jumping perfectly. So let's try doing something a bit more difficult. How do I make a script that will show a game over menu and pause the game when my object hits another collider? I thought the AI would mess up, but no, it even told me how to set up the objects to collide with each other and gave me all of the code that I needed. If there's one little detail that I have to say, it would be that the game over menu would be better off just being a game object variable, since the code doesn't use the canvas class and always does dot game object. So might as well just save the game object. But it will still work like this, so I'm not complaining too much. Once again, it's in 3D and I wanted to test the AI again by asking another question with no context. Can it also be done with 2D collisions? I thought for sure the AI wouldn't understand what I meant by it, but nope, it understood and it even replied, yes, it is possible. So clearly replying to my question. And it also told me what to change only instead of repeating the whole thing, but for 2D. So that's really amazing. It's able to reply with the context and also understand simple things like can it be done? So this AI is the most advanced I've ever seen. So now I can add my game over menu canvas, paste the code in the script, add obstacles to collide with. And just like that, we have our game over with a paused game. But our bird is not moving forward yet. So let's do that. I asked the AI, how do I make my object move forward at the start of the game? and keep its velocity. It told me the code to make the AI move forward at the start and told me how to add it as usual. It didn't really tell me how to make it keep the velocity. I was hoping maybe it would tell me to set the drag to zero on the rigid body, but it looks like it assumed it was already set at zero. Also, this was in 3D again, so I simply said in 2D and it wrote it again for 2D. Literally no context, just in 2D and it got it. I added it to my jump script, but my bird went up instead of forward. That's because the AI doesn't know the forward direction in my game. Forward could be left, right or up if it's a top down game. So I said the forward direction is in the positive x direction and it told me to fix it by changing it to vector3.right. That's amazing. Once again, no context, just the forward direction is this direction and it fixed it. Now I'm going to push the AI really hard by referencing the first thing I asked it, which is the jump script. The jump right now works by adding a force, which is hard to control, and Flappy Bird games usually set the velocity to up instead of adding a force, which means that the bird always goes up at the same speed. 
So I asked how do I make the jump script from earlier set the velocity to go up instead of adding a force. It actually remembered what I was talking about and gave me exactly what I asked for. It even explained the difference between the old add force code and the new set velocity code and how I have to choose the right one to get the behavior I want in my game. I pasted that new code and fixed it for 2D like it told me to do at the start and it worked but my bird lost its velocity on the x-axis when I jumped. So I asked, how do I make my object not lose its velocity when doing that? And once again, it understood what that was and told me how to do it with code and explained what the code did. Once again, I had to switch it to 2D and yes, it works. Now I need to make my camera follow my player and I also need to spawn objects in the player's path. I asked it how to make the camera follow the player and I don't know if it's because everyone is playing with this AI right now and the servers can't keep up or if it just didn't understand but it had an error. So I came back a bit later and when I came back I asked the same thing but with a bit more context and it gave me two solutions depending on the kind of tracking I want. Amazing. Then I asked how do I make an object spawn every time the player travels 10 units in the X direction. It gave me code with explanations and even put in the values I asked with the 10 units and the x direction. The code it gave even has comments, so if I don't understand something later, I still have the comments. Now if I paste this code in the new script, it actually works. The only problem is that it spawns the objects on the player causing an instant game over. But to be fair, I didn't tell the AI where to spawn the objects. So I asked it, how can I make the object spawn to the right of the player? And for the first time, it gave me an answer that wasn't perfect. It seemed to have forgotten all about the distance travel and instead spawned the object every frame. It does say under it that it spawns every frame, so I will need to add a condition or something like a timer. So I needed to know enough programming to mix the last two answers, but I wasn't too hard, I just took the spawn position line and pasted it in the old code and it worked. Now I need to make the object spawn at a random height, not always up. The AI was able to tell me how to get a random height in the camera view, so I copied that part and then added three lines by myself to mix them together. But I mean, it's just setting and adding vectors. I'm not gonna ask the AI how to add vectors. But I'm sure if I did, it would tell me how to do it. And there you go, the object spawn at a random height. That's pretty cool. The camera still follows the player up and down though, so it kind of ruins that. At this point, there's a lot more I could do, but I think we tested the AI enough. So one last thing would be to have a restart button. I want to see if it will tell me how to set up the button on the canvas too, or just the script. As expected, the AI gave me the code for the button, as well as instructions on how to set it up. I followed the steps exactly and it worked perfectly. The only thing missing was that my game was still paused. But that's not really the AI's fault because it didn't know that it was paused. I asked how to unpause it and it gave me the code too. And just like that, the restart button works. We now have a fully playable game without having to write any code or think about any logic. I think this will be an amazing tool for people learning how to code because of all the explanations as well. Not only does it give you the code, but it explains to you how it works, so it helps you, but also makes it so you don't depend on it, you can actually learn yourself. Now I can thank the AI and ask it to name our creation. The AI was glad to have helped me, and that I thanked it, but it didn't offer a name. Thanks for watching, hopefully you enjoyed. Make sure to check this AI out while it's still available and free. And subscribe if you like game dev content.